same exact same hour that the fire, this tragic fire broke out at the Cape. I had my crew with Gene and John Young doing a test in Downey, California, the sister spacecraft. We had, fortunately, we had only air in the cabin. I think we may have had oxygen in the suit, but an air in the cabin. And uh, so I remember everything was really bad. All kinds of glitches and errors. I remember John Young said, go to the moon, hell, this thing won't even go into Earth. <laughs> and I, I called the test off, it was so bad. You know, crew leaks were going all over the place. It was just, it was bad news. We got out, we got the word about the proportion about the tragic fire. But also, then came some neighbors, some people who said, let's don't go. Let's call Apollo quits. One of the key ones was a person named Senator Walter Bondi, who later vice president and ran for president, and somehow he didn't make it, fortunately. And uh, anyway, but Bondi led a big push in the U.S. Senate to cancel Apollo. Fortunately, President Lyndon Johnson had all the horsepower he needed, and he pushed it right on through. Yeah, let, let me comment on I was on a backup crew for Apollo 1 uh, until two months before the fire, and then Walt came in and follow up. Going to the moon is very, very hard. It's very, very hard. I cannot tell you how difficult it was to try and keep up with all those systems being integrated and tested. And we used to sit out at Downey and sit in the spacecraft running the test. We had no simulators, so we got our experience that way, but we also developed the procedures and the checklist and sitting in the spacecraft running tests. It's very, very hard to go to the moon. We lost Apollo 1 for many, many reasons. Uh, everything from, we just didn't have it. The imagination, curiosity, as John Glenn miss, mentioned, because we're all working so hard to get it done. And we missed a few things. But after the fire, everybody regrouped and fixed a lot of things that would have probably been major problems later on. And I think the unfortunate part of the fire is we lost three really great guys and stumbled in the program for a while. But the other is everybody woke up and everybody really got to work and all sorts of things got fixed. And that's why the next series of flights were successful as they were. Apollo 13 got back because the guys on the ground, as we talked about this morning, could figure out how the systems worked. They knew it so well, but it had enough in it to be able to get it back. So the whole program benefited from a tragic loss, uh, but I think that's one reason we won the space to the room. Yeah, Raise the guys for all our friends and our colleagues. Uh, a couple things I remember most about that fire, because Roger Chaffee uh, was my neighbor. My daughter played with his kids, we were with your friends, we did things together. And Tom and I were in that airplane coming home from LA that night. And uh, Roger and I used to fly a lot together in Nassau Bay. In those days, astronauts, we could do anything. We'd come down to San Antonio, we'd point towards our houses. Just south of Ellington, we'd make a low pass, and wives knew we were home. <laughs> that night, Tom and I were pretty quiet. We landed uh, and uh, got home and went across the front yard to, uh, to talk to Martha. There were 100 cars there, and what do you say? I'm not sure what I said at the time. The other thing I always remember, that accident occurred on January 27th, 67, 67, no. February, I, I, I can, it's very vivid in my mind, walking behind those caissons at Arlington on a cold, cold, wet February day, wondering whether we had buried our friends and colleagues or whether we had uh, buried the entire Apollo of us really knew what was in store in the future. But there's one thing to remember, to pick up what Dave said. And we said earlier today, we're all pulling a wagon in the same direction when it really counted. Everybody who went to the moon, notwithstanding the Apollo 1 tragedy, nor the near miss on Apollo 13, everyone who went to the moon, has come home to talk about it. Yep. You heard from Jim Lovell and Fred Hayes this morning. That's a testimony to the commitment and the dedication and the ingenuity of the American people. Thank you.